brought to you by the Give Something Back Foundation. Welcome back to Life and Living. We're talking now all about diabetes, diabetes prevention, and what you should be doing to be your healthiest. I'm joined right now by Dr. Mary Fries, who is a certified diabetes educator at Summit Medical Group. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Joanna. It's you were nice just telling here. me off the air that you've been doing this for a long time. Yes. And degrees in just about every aspect of health, health nutrition, and health and wellness that you can think of. First, why this field for you? I was the heavy kid who became anorexic as a teen. Um, so when I went to school up in Massachusetts to try to help myself because it was kind of breaking up the family too, I took a nutrition course and loved it. And then from there I did uh, combination nutrition with exercise phys for my masters because it's, it's gotta be both. It's gotta be a lifestyle. Um, my doctorate's health behavioral psych because again, the well-being. So coming onto this position was wonderful because I had to move back to Jersey, family health reason, you know, and uh, it just kind of rolled in my lap. So I'm, I'm very happy to be here too with Summit Medical. We run the gamut in New Jersey, right? From people who are uber healthy to people who are still so far behind the curve. Um, diabetes is very, very prevalent, especially in our urban areas. What are the main triggers for diabetes? Because that is your specialty. A lot of times, I mean, genetics plays a, a part, but it's that becoming overweight, becoming sedentary. And the more overweight, the harder it is for insulin to do its job because the fat cells get bigger. And then when those fill up, you get more fat cells if you don't change. Insulin breaks down sugar in the body, right? It helps sugar to get into the cells so that they can use it for energy. Because, you know, when people say you have diabetes, oh, don't eat sugar, you'll be fine. Don't eat cake, you eat. It's beyond that. I mean, you eat calories for energy. The energy is glucose. So, you know, even if it's not sugar itself, you know, you eat a little bit excess chicken, some of that's going to get converted to glucose. So it's glucose isn't a bad thing. Our portions have become atrocious. Um, our lifestyles, you know, I'm older than you, but we had PE every day, you know, up through senior and high school. Now the kids are lucky if they have it once or twice a week. And then most of them are texting, sitting on the, the benches versus right. actually participating. So you say it's not as simple as what you should not do. Don't eat sugar, don't eat cake. Right. What should we be doing? Let's talk about, let's break it down for kids and adults. Let's talk about, for an adult, what a day should look like for them to be at their optimal health. A lot of it's portion control. Some of the habits that people have that kind of make them overconsume. You don't pay attention while you're eating. I mean, we're all guilty of doing something on the computer it and, you know. used to you be know. in front of the TV, now it's the cell phone, right? Right, <laughs> right. so And for right kids there, too, right? Kids too. And you I, know, I you're always wanna... multitasking. Yeah. I can give you rocks and you're going to be still doing this because you're not paying attention. I've got some friends who do that intentionally uh -huh. for their kids. Put, <laughs> they put their video there so that they don't even know that they're eating, get the vegetables in. But well, that's not good? When they're picky, uh, you know. It helps. <laughs> we don't sense, want to judge helps, anybody, But right? we don't want to do that long term <laughs> right. because then... You know, you see the person in the car with a fast food bag of fries. Right. All of a sudden, where are fries they? Fries are gone. We Didn't finished even know. them. Yes. And if you don't enjoy it here, you want one more thing. Is it diet? Is it exercise? Is it both? It's both, um, but it's also fueling up not to be over full. You know, I, I'm half Italian, half Hungarian. So, you know, it was clean your plate and you've got to be full and you got to have chubby cheeks and yada yada. And food is the cornerstone of the family right. too, right? The family dinners are so important. Right. Which is fine, but put a little bit less on your plate. Right. Eat until your hunger is gone, right. not until you feel like, all right, got to unbutton the pants and sit on the couch. You know, and that's what we've kind of gotten into is that, you know, you go to a, a restaurant, six cups of pasta, that's 12 pieces of bread. But hey, it's there, we're getting our money's worth. You know, and most of the starches are very inexpensive. You know, so when you go to restaurants, the big pile of French fries, the big pile of rice, those foods themselves aren't bad, it's the amount. If you look at a plate, what is a balanced plate? What does a balanced plate look like? Lots of veggies, at least half veggies. It could be raw, could be stir fried, could be as a veggie soup, something. Many people are missing the veggies. How much protein? Are we overeating protein? We're overeating pretty much everything except veggies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, protein, women need approximately, you know, six to eight ounces of meat, chicken, or fish, or equivalent. What does that look like? 
Four is about this. Six is about up to your first. So the palm of the hand. You know. Palm is about four, up to the first knuckle is about six. So when I get that big <laughs> You can eat it today steak, and tomorrow eye. and maybe right. some for breakfast the, you know, right. the day after. So, I mean, it's okay to eat a little bit more than we need physiologically, but, you know, in, where I was in Florida, 42-ounce steak, get your picture on the wall. Right. <laughs> you know, you don't need this that. This is not man versus food. <laughs> right, exactly. So what about, what about exercise? What do you recommend per day, per week? Ideally, everybody should be doing something. Initially, if people go from doing nothing to wanting to do to something. To what, walking a set of stairs? Do 15 minutes. Whatever it is that you like to do. Now that summer with the pool, go outside and futz around with your legs and arms a little bit for 15 minutes. Get, it's, it's more getting into the habit of doing something. You know, once you do that, things are going to become easy. So it's not going to be a challenge. So yeah, we can go five more minutes. Or we can go a little faster. Or we can try riding a bike instead. But for most people, it's just trying to do something consistently. And what about for our kids? Are our kids too sedentary? Yes. And it's, you know, being a, a single parent, I know it's difficult. Um, my son played ice hockey in Florida, so it was schlep here, schlep there. Not easy you to know. find ice in Florida. <laughs> There's actually five rinks within 30 miles of us. You know, you know that. Um, but get them busy. Get them into something. It's, it's hard to, you know, the schools don't have the yards like we used to where they can do something, but it's really very important. It's just difficult because sometimes it's, it's expensive. And, and the for snacking, the urban kids that need it. And the snacking, tell the, the kids, put the snacks down, too. right? It's, Stop all of it. Dr. Mary Fries, certified diabetes edu educator, excuse me, at <laughs> Summit Medical Group. Thank you. Brought to you by the Give Something Back Foundation, the New Jersey State Nurses Association, and the Institute for Nurses. Hackensack Meridian Health, and by the North Ward Center.